because thermite, maybe, maybe I think I remember it, but I'll just tell you actually what we, what we found in the lab. Because Stephen E. Jung also came to ask himself the question, as I said, whenever you use an explosive, there's always something there. So maybe we, if we look carefully, we could find remains of thermite in the dust. And he did indeed find this. He should give you credit for, for, for having been thinking on this and actually doing the initial experiments. And this was presented on December the 15th in, in, in Boston. And when, when Jones presented, shown this picture, we call them red gray chips. They're tiny particles being red on one side, and you'll recognize that it is the same color as rust. It's the same because it contains iron oxide. The other side is gray. There's another variety. It's not important. And uh, this, this particularly red gray chip is extraordinarily big. It's about almost two millimeters. And the thickness of these red gray chips are on the order of magnitude about one tenth of a millimeter across here. This is an electron microscope picture of a chip, and there are no colors in the electron microscope. So I have to inform you that the white, this is the red layer, and this is the gray layer. Most of them are less than one millimeter. So you need a microscope to find them, and also some skill of experiments, and experience also to pick out the chip. Some of the chips has been, we have discovered it where we acted. And before I go through the highlights, we have mentioned that the work eventually led to a scientific publication which came out on April 3rd, 2009, almost two years ago, where you sincerely had the, the honor of being on a team of nine scientists uh, uh, of publishing uh, these findings. And this will be the last time on my presentation to go through the highlights of this. The most important property of the red chips are that they are reactive. Yes, some of them have to be good. Some of them are reactive, meaning that they take off when you heat them up. It's rather difficult actually to show, uh, to illustrate, but here is an experiment where the experimentalist is approaching a micro torch to a red gray chip in here. Those sitting up front and see that there is a little yellow flame. Actually, it's a particle which is shooting up because it's out from the sample, and the experimentalist could feel something hit his hand. But we could, he could, I was saying, he could find the particle uh, actually afterwards. And but what we are doing is we are putting these chips in a device called differential scanning calibrator, where you measure the heat coming out from the reaction. And this is the blue line here. And you see it's 400, about 430 degrees. The temperature, the heat development shoots up through the roof, literally, and then cools down again. So it takes off and ignites at a relatively low temperature. The red line here is the only published the corresponding experiment with this material which we call nanothermite. And it is called nanothermite because it is qualitatively different from the stuff we saw on the French car, from the good old invention by Hans Grossman, where you just, where you divided, and finally divided the room, and finally divided the iron oxide, and you just mix the two colors. This the science we call the top-down approach to making this mixture, you have something bigger, and you make the particles smaller, smaller. In nanotechnology, you start from what we call the bottom-up procedure. You are making the materials from at the atomic scale and molecular scale and upwards. You're telling, and you're actually cheating the, the atoms and the molecules to do to arrange in certain structures. It is not old wine and new bottles. It is a fundamental different approach to making materials. And when when we make when you're making a thermite by nanotechnology, there are two uh, important features 
of the material and the procedure. One is that the particles, the aluminum particles and the ionic particles, are much smaller than in high school, in the old fashioned thermite. So, and they are much more intimately mixed in, in, in the material. So the reaction is much faster. Also, the particles are embedded in a, in a polymer, the polymer matrix, which helps along in different ways, which we do not quite understand in this particular case. Particular case. But you have the option during, during production of that thermite to mix in other chemicals <coughs> in the material, which eventually can, can, can use the energy the energy of the chemical reaction and convert it not from it being an incendiary, as the classical thermite is, to being an explosive. This is why you see this fire in the reaction. It is, and it is taken off at a lower temperature than conventional thermite, where you have to 